understanding, of course, John, he, John is uh, asked the question, art thou he or should we look for another? Of course, Christ, he quells John's uh, misgivings and whatnot, and he makes the point to those who are listening and those who are following both he and John uh, that, uh, oh, oh. Makes, a, makes the point that there's, you need to hear both me and John and not be so fickle. Matter of fact, in that same passage of scripture uh, in John chapter, or rather in Matthew chapter 11, we recognize also that uh, there are several cities that Christ calls out, Cherazim, uh, Bethsaida, and Capernaum. Why? Why? Because they would not hear Christ. They would not repent. And of course, uh, that was Christ's message. Repent because the kingdom of heaven is near at hand. Matthew 4, and verse number 17. We also recognize though in chapter 12, when Christ has healed the, 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 the man that's deaf and dumb, that passage of scripture, the Pharisees, they say that's because of the devil. Jesus makes the point that how can, how can a, a house divided against itself, how can it stand? How can Satan cast out Satan in 25 and 26 of that chapter? As a matter of fact, our Lord and Savior at that point, um, that because of this growing opposition, our Lord and Savior, it, it, we, we recognize, folks, uh, says the same day in verse number one of, of Matthew 13, the same day Jesus went out of the house, went out of the synagogue, and notice, he's at the seaside preaching to the people. And he preaches to them in parables. Well, what is a parable? It comes from that Greek word parabole, or parabola, depending on uh, who you want to believe. And it means to lay aside something, or lay beside something. In other words, I guess a, 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 a common definition might be um, uh, an earthly story that conveys a heavenly meaning. And Jesus spoke to them in parables so that if the people wanted to hear, they could understand if they were willing to hear. The disciples ask the question there in verse number 10 it says and the disciples came and said unto him why speakest thou unto them in parables drop down to verses uh, uh, 34 and 35 of the text 34 and 35 it says all these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables and without a parable spake he not unto them and throughout this chapter Jesus is speaking in various parables and study this for you on, on your own for time's sake it says in verse 35, that it might be fulfilled uh, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have uh, which been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Yeah. Now, a parable is not to be confused with a fable, which is uh, uh, this, this, this story that, that where you have an, an animal or perhaps an inanimate object uh, speaking. So that it can't be that. A parable can't be confused with a, a myth, which is in essence a lie. You know, that, that's what the, 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 the Greeks and the Romans believed in. Par a parable cannot be a, a story, because a story is imaginary. A parable conveys truth. It was a common occurrence, something that could happen. Here in this passage of scripture is the parable of the sower. The sower is not the thing. No, it's not the, 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 the pertinent point here. What's that seed? And, and the grounds in which the seed fell upon. This is something that all the people could relate to. There's a passage of scripture back in Nehemiah chapter 8, Nehemiah chapter 8, and round about verse number 8. That passage of scripture tells us uh, that Nehemiah, well, let's look at it real quick. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse number 8 says, So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense, notice, and caused them to understand the reading. This is what Ezra the scribe did in that passage of scripture so that people can understand uh, uh, his word. In other words, understand the word of God. In other words, he expounded upon the word of God so that people could understand. There's a passage of scripture in uh, Mark chapter 12 and verse number 37 tells us concerning Christ and his teaching and the common people heard him glad. Think about this for a moment, folks. He's talking about that par the parable of the sower, the, the sower and being out there in the seaside, something perhaps the people could even witness, maybe. 
as Christ is teaching perhaps somebody in, in, out in the field sowing seed and the seed falls wherever it may. And so as we go back to the text in Matthew chapter uh, 13, let's give a little explanation, a little bit of explanation to the, um, to the various uh, seeds because this, the, the seed would go, or various uh, grounds rather, the seed would go wherever it may and hit various grounds and where it landed nobody knows and what might happen nobody knows. God knows, but, but notice uh, in Matthew chapter 13 and uh, drop down to uh, verse number 18. So we're gonna go back to the, uh, those verses in, in a little bit, but uh, Lord willing. It says, Jesus says, hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone hear the word of God, listen, anyone hear the word of, the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one or the devil and, and, and notice, and catcheth away, uh, catcheth away uh, that which was sown in his heart that uh, this, this, he, uh, this, this is he which uh, receiveth seed by the wayside. Let's talk a little bit about that wayside here, that wayside here. The seed falls on that ground. Um, when um, they were sowing the seed and they, 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 they had a path in which they walked. And, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. <clears throat> they had a path in which they walked and, 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 and that path was not ground in which for them to, to sow the seed upon. And this was in essence the, 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 the wayside. You know, if you, if you walk in, in, in a, 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 a patch of ground so long, it's gonna develop a, a pathway, if you will. It's going to be difficult for you to grow anything there. And, and, and they threw this, uh, they threw their, their, their uh, seed wherever, and if it landed in that wayside, then it wasn't going to grow. And the birds would come, the fowls of the air, the birds would come in and eat that up. And it says in this passage of Scripture, as Christ is explaining it, that, 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 that Satan, that wicked one, comes right away immediately and, and takes that in, any hearing, any understanding that they would have, perhaps, away from them. But think about this, folks. The wayside here, in essence, is a person who has no intention of hearing God's word. None whatsoever. It's a person who comes to church with the folded hand and the closed mind. It's the 16-year-old boy that his mother has to make go to church. And it, but, you know, it's, it's one thing for that to happen. But think about this. The 36-year-old man whose wife also has to make him go to church. You know, the sad, that's a sad commentary. And you have, those, you have those situations. The person who only comes to church perhaps for a, a wedding or a funeral but has no intention ever of hearing God nor his word. Let, let's look at a passage of scripture real quick in uh, Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. And verse number 23. Jeremiah 17 and verse number 23. And notice what the scripture says in this. It says, but they obeyed not, this obstinate ear, but they obeyed not, neither inclined their ear, but made their neck stiff, that they might not hear nor receive the instruction. Those people who have no intention of hearing God's word. Again, that's, that's descriptive of those back in Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, uh, the scribes and the Pharisees. Well, let's go back to the text. Let's go back to the text real quickly. Let's go back to the text. And let's note... Um, Note uh, the next here, the next here, the stony ground here, the stony ground here. In verses 20 and 21 it says, But he that receiveth seed into stony places, the, 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 the same as he that heareth the word, and a nun, or immediately the, the joy, with joy receiveth it, yea, uh, or yet uh, hath not uh, root in himself, but doeth for a while. But when tribulation and persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Notice that. The stony ground here. You, sometimes we've had people who've come into the church, uh, perhaps new converts, perhaps people who like to do maybe some church hopping, but uh, they come in there. They're seemingly on fire. They have this joy, if you will, about God and his word. And they do it for a while, except for when tribulation, those hard times start to come about. You know, 
There are various passages of scripture that talk about tribulation and, and persecution, if you will. You know, those people who say, well, I thought when, when I was baptized, or I thought when I became a member of the church, or I thought when I came back to the church, all these hard things were not going to happen to me. Remember back in John chapter 16, Christ promised what? Tribulation, persecution. There's a passage of scripture back in Matthew chapter 5 and, and, and verse number 10. He says, uh, in that passage of scripture, blessed, is, blessed are they, are they which, are, which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Why? But theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The passage of scripture also in, uh, uh, um, what's that, uh, first, uh, second Corinth, uh, second Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 12 says, Yea, and all that shall live godly in Christ Jesus shall do what? Suffer persecution. Persecution, tribulation. It's to be expected. You live here on this time side of life. It's just one of those things. But <clears throat> these, 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 who have that stony, these stony ground hearers, they endure they just for a little while and just and, and then when hard times come about, they're, they're out of there. They're out of there. You know, folks, uh, I want us to consider something. Look at a passage of scripture in Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, something that can help us. In Ephesians chapter 3, because back in our text, it says that they don't have any root in them. Remember when they were throwing, sorry, when they were throwing the seed on the ground, the, the stony ground was, 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 was the, 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 the part of the, the ground there in, 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 in Palestine that uh, uh, they, they had what they called stony ground. And it wasn't on the stones, but it, but it uh, was in uh, part of the ground that maybe went down to perhaps a, an inch, inch or a half an inch thick and, 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 and where there was sediment or, 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 or what do you call that, uh, limestone perhaps. And, and, and it wasn't, the seed wasn't able to germinate. And, and as a result, it, it didn't have any root and it, it didn't have anywhere to, to grow and develop. Well, that's, that's kind of the, those, those stony ground here. They don't have much root in them. They can't grow and they can't develop. And I told you, let's look at Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, and let's start at verse number 7. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number, sorry, let's start at verse number Start at verse number 14. Scripture says this, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole Father in heaven and earth is named, uh, that, that he might, or rather that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. And notice verse number 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. You want to have root in your, in, in your life, in your heart? How do you get it? By faith. Faith cometh how? And hearing, hearing by the word of God, this is what they need in their lives. And, no, and note, because think about it, folks. This is how those of us who claim to be, uh, I guess, the non-stony ground Christians, this is how we make it. We have tribulation. We have hardship. We have persecution, if you will. Well, the persecution most of us endures by whom? By our family members here in this country. Are you still going to that Church of Christ? Are you still doing that Christian thing? You know, and sometimes we do things that maybe fit in like they do. Is that, well, well but, but notice, in the verse 17, that, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye notice, being rooted and grounded in love, and whose love and the love of Christ may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, human knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Don't miss that, folks. That's going to help you. It's God and his word. That's the only thing. Now, I want you to think about this for just a moment. I want you to think about this for just a moment. Those of us who, uh, who um, may not be persecuted, or those of us who, uh, 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 who condemn brethren for not hanging in there because of persecution, tribulation, hardship in our lives, think about it when it happens to you. Think about it. What if it does happen to you? How you and I might react at that point in time? Will we be that stony ground Christian? Will we? Let's go back to the text. Let's go back to the text. Back in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. And notice. 
the thorny hearers, the thorny hearers. Matthew 13, starting in verse number 22, says, He also that receiveth seed among the, among the thorns is he that heareth the word. And notice, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. Notice that. You know, when the seed was thrown out into the, uh, to the ground, and it, it, and it, and it uh, uh, went down into that ground for those, uh, the, the thorny ground, uh, rather the, the, the thorny ground, it was difficult to tell whether it was actually good ground or maybe not so good ground because you wouldn't be able to tell until the seed started to come up and bud perhaps that it was the case that the seed was in ground that, uh, uh, that fell among, that, that was also with the thorns and various other weeds. Well, what's the point? The point here is that could be a little bit deceitful, if you will. It gave the appearance that, that that ground, if you will, could be some good ground. Now, I'm saying all this to make this point, that it could be that same way. It could be that exact same way with most of the people in the church. You know, most of the people give the appearance. Most of the people in the church give the appearance of Faithful people, that faithful preacher, that faithful teacher, that faithful elder, that faithful elder's wife, that faithful deacon, deacon, deacon what, deacon's wife, that, that faithful person because they come to church and they, 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 do, they do everything in the church. They never miss. They're always there. But think about it. But the passage of Scripture makes this point that they were unfruitful. The difference in this and the good ground is Fruitfulness, And what do you mean by that? We may be doing all these things in the body of Christ, church. But how many people have we won to Christ? How many people are we telling about Christ? Think about that for a moment. Think about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What was his mission? To seek and to save that which was lost? Luke 19, 10. Are we doing that same thing? And we call ourselves Christians like unto Christ? Are we doing that same exact same thing? It says here in this passage of scripture that because of the, 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 because of the world, the world. Remember, Demas loved this present world. What's that passage of scripture? Second, uh, second, second Timothy four ten. Is that can that be, same thing be said of us? And the deceitfulness of riches. Remember, there's a passage. Go back and read second, uh, rather first uh, Timothy chapter six and verse number seventeen. Watch out for those riches. But I want us to think about this for a moment, folks. And we can be deceived. We can be deceived. We could be perhaps this uh, 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 thorny ground Christian. You know, brethren will say to you, hey, I'm working this hard. I'm doing all these things so that I, so I can do this for my family, to set up my family later on in life. Or, or brethren will say, hey, I'm, I'm doing all this work so I can have extra money, the overtime, the extra job, so that I can give more money to the church. I want you to look at this passage of Scripture real quickly in Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, and more than the money for the church, this is what we need in the church. Matthew chapter 9, verse 38, or 37 and 38. Notice what the scripture says. Then saith he unto his disciples, Christ speaking, says, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Notice, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. We need, we need brethren ready and willing to work more so than we need your money. Think about that, brother. Because we need to be out there on the battlefield telling other people about Christ. We need to be out there on the battlefield telling our, telling our uh, brethren who are going astray that you need to come back to the Lord before it's everlasting too late. Real quickly, look, go back to the text real quickly in uh, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 and notice real quickly the, uh, the good ground. This was the difference in, in this and the thorny, uh, thorny ground was what? Verse 23 says, But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which beareth fruit, and bringeth forth, notice, some hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. When you throw that seed out there, you don't know what it's going to bring. You don't know what, what, what it's gonna, what, what's going to come of it. You know, one, one tree may, bring, uh, may, may yield a, 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 a hundred, a, a hundred a, 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 a oranges and another just ten. But it's the level of understanding. And really, and really the, the, the point here is, is not the number, but it's the faithfulness and the fruitfulness, folks. It's the fruitfulness. Because the thorny ground brought forth nothing. 
Look real quickly in John chapter 15. John chapter 15, real quick. John chapter 15, and note this passage of scripture, familiar passage of scripture, John 15, verse number one, Christ says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Now notice verse number two, he says, every branch, not some branches, but every branch in me, notice that, that, bear, that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch that beareth not fruit, don't miss that point. He's going to take it away. If you're not bringing forth fruit, and he told his disciples, abide in me, stay in me, stick with me. Because without me, you can do what? Nothing. Now notice what he says further in this passage, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges thee. Take away the things you don't need in your life, that it may bring forth more, much fruit. It's God's expectation that we be fruitful. Real quickly, real quickly, and we're going to wrap, wrap the lesson real quickly. Go back to the text in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Now, it was Christ's expectations that his disciples would know these things. In verse number, they, they were the ones who asked the, the question. Verse number, go back to verse number 10. He says, and the disciples came and asked him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? Verse number 11, he says, uh, he answered and says, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is given in parables. You need to know these things. He's talking about your level of discernment, your level of understanding. You are my disciples. I'm going to send you out into the world. You need to know all these things. To them in parables, if they want to know it, they can search it out. Don't miss this, folks. If you, something you don't understand, take the example of the disciples here. In Mark's account, uh, Mark chapter 4, it notes that it wasn't just the 12, but other disciples with the 12. They went, and they, they, they went to the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ also our God and ask God for more understanding so that they can hear so that they can understand I'm going to wrap this up real quick with this point okay let me let me make this point I'll be done you know we talked about um, now you hear it now you don't I was talking recently to a young lady as a member of the Lord's Church also a family member grown up in the church heard God's word all her life and that young lady was, was making the point, you know, when I go to church, sometimes I don't hear what brother so-and-so said. I don't hear, I, 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 he, I, he's old, but the other brother I can understand. Huh? Think about it. It's somebody preaching God's word. And we made the point to her, you know, because it tells us in the text that this is a heart problem in verse number 15. That we need to be more ready to hear than to offer the sacrifice of fools in Ecclesiastes 5. And verse number one, folks, sometimes, folks, it's a heart problem. And that's what Christ, and that's the point Christ is making in the text. Go back and study the text out for yourself. I knew we wouldn't have enough time. Hope you learned something. Let's say amen, please. Thank you, Brother Johnson. So we're going to proceed. On. Uh, we're going to have uh, a song.